Eendrak Verwoerd was born in Amsterdam in the Netherlands on the 8th of September in 1901. He was the second child of Anja Struck and Wilhelmus Johannes Verwoerd. His father was a shopkeeper and a deeply religious man who decided to move his family to South Africa in 1903 because of his sympathy towards the Afrikaner nation in the wake of the Second Boer War. Verwoerd went to a Lutheran primary school in Weinbach in Cape Town. By the end of 1912, the Verwoerd family went to Bulawayo in Rhodesia, where his father became an assistant evangelist in the Dutch Reformed Church. Hendrik attended Milton High School, where he was awarded the Bates Scholarship, established by diamond magnate and financier Alfred Bate, and he also received the top marks for English literature in Rhodesia. In 1917, the family moved back to South Africa since the congregation in Bulawayo had appointed a second minister of religion. His father took up a position in the church at Brantford in the Orange Free State. Due to the worldwide Spanish flu epidemic, Hendrik only wrote his matriculation exams in February of 1919, achieving first position in the Orange Free State and fifth in the country. Hendrik studied at Stellenbosch University, where he was regarded as a brilliant social science academic, and it was widely claimed that he possessed a photographic memory. Hendrik was fluent in Afrikaans, Dutch, English, and German. He obtained his BA with distinctions in sociology, psychology, and philosophy, and then completed his master's in cum laude. He then went on to complete his doctorate in psychology in 1925. Hendrik's over 300-page doctorate thesis, titled The Aufstompung von Gemutsandinungen, was at the time regarded as a monumental academic achievement in the field of applied psychology in South Africa. Hendrik wanted to continue his research under a number of renowned German psychology and philosophy professors, and left for Germany in 1926, and proceeded to research psychology and sociology at the University of Hamburg in Berlin. Verwurt's fiancée, Betsy Skumbi, joined him in Germany, and they were married in Hamburg on the 7th of January in 1927. Later that year, he continued his studies in the United Kingdom, and then proceeded to the United States. His lecture notes and memoranda at Stellenbosch University stressed that there were no biological differences between the big racial groups, and concluded that, quote, this was not really a factor in the development of higher social civilization by the Caucasians, end quote. Hendrik returned with his wife to South Africa in 1928 and was appointed to the Chair of Applied Psychology and Psychotechnique at the University of Stellenbosch, where six years later he became Professor of Sociology and Social Work. During the Great Depression, Hendrik became active in social work among poor white South Africans. He devoted much attention to welfare work and was often consulted by welfare organizations while he served on numerous committees. Afrikaans politics from 1910 to 1948 were divided between the liberals, such as Jan Smits, who argued for a reconciliation with Britain, versus the extremists, who expressed anti-British sentiments due to the Boer War. Although both liberals and extremists both believed that South Africa was a quote, white man's country, the latter was more stridently committed to white supremacy. Hendrik belonged to the anti-British faction in Afrikaans politics, who wanted to keep as much distance as possible from Britain. In 1936, Hendrik, joined by a group of Stellenbosch University professors, protested against the immigration of German Jews to South Africa, who were fleeing Nazi persecution. His efforts in the field of national welfare drew him into politics, and in 1936 he was offered the first editorship of the Transvaler, a position which he took up in 1937, with the added responsibility of helping rebuild the National Party in the Transvaal. The Transvaler was a publication which supported the aspirations of Afrikaner nationalism, agricultural and labor rights. Together with republicanism, populism, and protectionism, the paper helped solidify the sentiments of most South Africans, that changes to the socio-economic system were vitally needed. With the start of the Second World War in September of 1939, Hendrik protested against South Africa's role in the conflict, when the country declared war on Germany, siding with its former colonial power, the United Kingdom. In 1943, Hendrik sued the English-language newspaper The Star, after it accused him of being a Nazi propagandist, in his judgment dismissing the case, Justice Malin stated that Verwurt, quote, did support Nazi propaganda. He did make his paper a tool of Nazis in South Africa, and he knew it, end quote. 
The South African general elections of 1948 was held on the 26th of May and saw the Nationalist Party go together with the Afrikaner Party, winning the general elections. Malans Haar Enigte Nationale Partij concluded an election pact with the Afrikaner Party in 1947. They won the elections with a very narrow majority of five seats in Parliament, although they only got 40% of the voter support. This was due to the loaded constituencies in cities, which was to the advantage of rural constituencies. The nine Afrikaner Party MPs thus made it possible for Malans Haar Enigte Nationale Partij to form a coalition government with the Afrikaner Party of Klaasie Havenga. The two parties amalgamated in 1951 as the National Party. Although Havenga was not comfortable with the policy to remove colored voters from the common voters' role, Hendrik was elected to the Senate of South Africa later that year and became the Minister of Native Affairs under Prime Minister Milan in 1950. In that position, he helped to implement the Nationalist Party's program. Among the laws that were drawn and enacted during Hendrik's time as Minister for Native Affairs were the Population Registration Act and the Group Areas Act in 1950 the Pass Laws Act of 1952, and the Reservation of Separate Amenities Act of 1953. Prime Minister Daniel Milan announced his retirement from politics following the National Party's success in the elections of 1953. In the succession debate that followed Milan's retirement in 1954, Nikolaus Havenga and Johannes Streidum were potential successors. The Young Turks of Transvaal got the upper hand and thus Johannes Streidum was elected as the new leader of the National Party, who succeeded Milan as Prime Minister. Hendrik gradually gained popularity with the Afrikaner electorate and continued to expand his political support. With his overwhelming constituency victory in the 1958 elections and the death shortly thereafter of Prime Minister Johannes Streidum, Verwurt was nominated together with Eben Dongas and C.R. Schwab from the Orange Free State as candidates to add the party. Hendrik got the most votes in the second round and thus succeeded Streidum as Prime Minister. Hendrik Verwurt is often called the architect of apartheid for his role in shaping the implementation of apartheid's policies when he was Minister of Native Affairs and then Prime Minister, and he described apartheid as, quote, policy of good neighborliness. At the time that the National Party came to power in 1948, there were factional differences in the party about the implementation of systemic racial segregation. The larger Boskop faction favored segregation, but also favored the participation of black Africans in the economy, as long as black labor could be controlled to advance the economic gains of Afrikaners. A second faction were the purists, who believed in vertical segregation, in which blacks and whites would be entirely separated with black living in native reserves, with separate political and economic structures, which they believed would entail short-term severe pain, but would also lead to independence of white South Africans from black labor in long term. Hendrik belonged to a third faction that sympathized with the purists, but also allowed the use of black labor while implementing the purist goal of vertical separation. On the 9th of April in 1960, Hendrik opened the Union Exposition in Molnar Park, to mark the jubilee of the Union of South Africa. After Hendrik delivered his opening address, David Pratt, a rich English businessman and farmer from the Mahalisbach near Pretoria, attempted to assassinate him, firing two shots from a .22 pistol at point-blank range, one bullet perforating for Wurt's right cheek and the second his right ear. Within minutes of the assassination attempt, Verwurt, still conscious and blood gushing from his face, was rushed to the nearby Johannesburg Hospital. Two days later, the hospital issued a statement which described his condition as indeed satisfactory. Further examinations were carried out and they confirmed good expectations. The neurologist who treated Verwurt later stated that his escape had been absolutely miraculous. Specialist surgeons were called in to remove the bullets. At first, there was speculation that Verwurt would lose his hearing and sense of balance, but this would prove groundless as he returned to public life on the 29th of May, less than two months after the shooting. The court concluded that Pratt lacked legal capacity and could not be held criminally liable for having shot the Prime Minister. On the 26th of September in 1960, he was admitted to a mental hospital in Bloemfontein, and on the 1st of October in 1961, on his 53rd birthday, he took his own life, shortly before parole was to be considered. Join us again for part two.